skirmishing will get, but it's obviously a lot relying on the two major carries we saw, Betty and Shanks, and where what tools they're going to be getting as we're already neck deep into it. Team WE on the blue side, they picked up the Callista first pick, and then the response from anyone's legend was the Silas and Wukong. Yeah, I really like this. Like a lot of die potential already. Silas obviously super high prior on the patch, but also. You know, Renata is banned. What is the next be co best combination with Callista? It's a Moomoo. But can you really pick a Moomoo into a Silas? I feel like it'd be too dangerous. So we'll see if WE opt to lock in and secure that uh, Moomoo if they opt to go in a different direction. So far, looking like they might go for that Talia, which obviously does pretty well into these champions with dashes, you know, like the like the Silas, like the Wukong. Uh, but actually going to end up locking in the Azir. So I think it is most played so far this split. Obviously, if you're trying to kite back, if you're trying to use uh, the defensive uh, tools of the Poppy, Azir can really compound that. And I want to check back in as we're you know, going into the second phase already. We get the Aphelios lock in for anyone's legend before they go to that second phase. They're still missing the support on both sides for, for both these two teams. But I'm glad to see a little bit of that aggression on the side of the Callista. You know, a high priority pick we've been seeing in the LPL answered with the stability that the Aphelios brings. And we've still been seeing pretty aggressive plays from the Aphelios in the LPL, right? The, the Gale Forces forwards, the Flash forwards, trying to make those big moments. I still think it fits in the theme that we were going with. Now we're looking at the second phase of bans, though. Amumu, first ban by anyone's legend here to try and whittle down that pool a little bit. Yeah, and I'd be interested how AL approached this because you could definitely take top lane on four as a blind and then counter pick support. Or you can just take give counter pick to the top laner, which is typically what we see more often. Uh, I feel like the fact that they're batting all these supports might tend to suggest that they're going to snap up something as soon as we get out of this rotation. Nor has still been available. It's pretty crazy. I'd expect WE probably to ban that. Otherwise, AL may just take Nor on four. You know, super high prior pick. Very good into Callista because it is that point and click ultimate. No way mm. you can kite out play it. Um, we'll see if WE opt to ban that or risk leaving it open. I was interested that, uh, you know, we, we looking back at the bands, right? We've seen so much prevalence in Senna. We've seen Betty hiding that champion to, to every extent possible. And we got the respect from Team WE to not let that go over. And now we get the final ban here. It's actually a switch up. So we got the double support bands with the Rakan included for anyone's legend. But the Jax actually is a last second ban towards ZDZ. Yeah, concerned about that, maybe it's a counter pick from ZDZ. It could also suggest that WE might go towards the Gwen. You know, Jax, obviously, we saw yesterday what the Shy did to Rich's uh, Gwen on Jax. But it could just be that ZDZ is proficient. We'll see if they opt to lock that in. And it looks like they might be thinking along those lines. And as expected, the Nautilus locked in for AL, a really strong pick. My question is, what is WE going to take here to pair with the Callista? The only real range champion you have to pair with the Callista is Renata. Other than that, it tends to be those melee support. So we could see them go in that direction and pick something like a Leona, potentially even something that's a bit more defensive like the Braum. Uh, or, I mean, you know, if you want to be really crazy, you could flex the Poppy down and put something else jungle, but remains to be seen what they'll do here. Yeah, and Kadaya obviously uh, wanting to have something with a little bit of engaged potential. They go with the Rel, which uh, isn't something we've seen very popular here recently, but I personally really like the pick. It just depends because you're going into the Nautilus. A lot of things going to be in the execution bucket, I feel like. Yeah, I, I think that's the main thing with Rel is like, I feel like he's definitely low in the priority compared to other picks uh, in terms of these engaged top uh, engaged supports. But uh, I ultimately feel like the Rel, if you know, you pilot it well in a situation where you're trying to get on top of things like the uh, Felios can be very effective. Now, AL hey, going to lock in the cannon, which was kind of like the old school counter to Gwen back in spring. Things have changed a decent amount. You know, the durability changes weren't exactly friendly to Kennen. A champion wants to one-shot you, whereas they were very generous towards Gwen. So still expect this to be a favorable lane for CDZ, uh, but maybe less impact in the team fights than historically a Kennen has had. And also, you've got to note that, you know, Poppy and Azir have great tools for mitigating the Kennen. But ultimately, we kind of have this draft that's come out, right? We have mm -hmm. AL who are wanting to dive to get onto the back line. That is their main goal. You're up against Nazir, you're up against Callista. In team fights, it will be about getting on top of them and shutting them down with the tools you have available. Whereas really, I feel like for the other side, for WE, it's about that front to back. You know, keep your back line yeah. safe, run interruption, use your powerful front line, uh, and hopefully stop the Kennen and the Silas get, and the Wukong getting anywhere near. I, I will say that team fight from the side of anyone's legend, terrifying stuff there terrifying uh but 
I think when you're looking at the way to approach this one, I, I do actually enjoy the way that WE got to the end of this draft. I think there's obviously some questions to be had in terms of those executions and things along those lines, but I feel like at least the top side of the map can be set up for success. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, going into this game in the early stages, uh, we saw, I mean, we saw a little bit yesterday. It was uh, Rookie playing his A into uh, Silas. Heavy trading really comes down in the execution of this one. He does indeed. As we hit the rift for the first time, uh, the beauty of the Skybox and Team WE's home arena, as it is represented on Summoner's Rift, Team WE versus Anyone's Legend. We'll see if any exciting level ones come out or if we just to see business as usual. Um, but yeah, yesterday we saw a bit of this matchup, the uh the Azir into the, the Silas. You, know, you can trade really heavily. It's even the Conqueror from the Azir. So essentially the goal of this is if, if Silas does go into range of you to trade, you just drop down your soldiers and you will out trade him, right? Silas, especially early, has to wait for his cooldowns, has to wait for his rotation. Whereas Azir can just keep spamming you with those uh soldiers and doing a lot of work. Now Something else I want to know is if you look at Biu Biu and Shing, both of them have exhaust. Mm -hmm. This has been a pretty common strategy. When you see a cannon on the enemy team, running one or two exhaust can make a massive difference in those team fights because you know so much of the power of the cannon is front loaded onto that ultimate. If you're getting your damage reduced and then you're slicing mail some times out, you really offer so much less after yeah. your your ultimate's timed out. Yeah, and it's uh, it's all about the flanks and in those things as well. It, it can be absolutely like fight changing if a, a big flank comes up but if you get one of those big flanks and all of a sudden an exhaust comes down game's a little bit different at that point uh, i could appreciate that one at least team WE approaching the game on paper as it should be but as you were kind of saying I, I wonder how we see them work through this without going into those big team fights right kind of sticking to some of those skirmishing potentials that we highlighted for them yeah, well, hopefully WE can fish for some advantages early, particularly on the bot side, where they're in more of a position to contest. Talked a bit about the trading and mid, you should get prior there. Oh, big engage comes out. Should be some heavy trading, though. Just, yeah, yeah, it's just level one trade. So this is one thing to talk about with the RAL, is there's obviously two states uh, you can be in. You can either be in the mounted form, or as you can see, Kadai just goes into the uh, demounted form. And the reason he wants to be in the demounted form is that if he goes for his W, the big crash down, very telegraphed, very easy for Chocho to interrupt it with his Q. Uh, and then as a result, you don't get the lockdown onto Betty. Whereas if you go, if you demount and then you press W to mount up, uh, you, your first auto will flip them over you. So he's trying to use that aspect of the ability, which is more reliable to try and get on top of Betty and apply pressure. And that's kind of the thing is some lanes are really dictated by that. It's like whether or not, you know, do I want to be jumping in and crashing down or do I want to be mounting up and tossing them over my back? Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential for volatility, especially when you're looking at WWE's side of the matchup in bottom lane, but expected safety to come out in terms of play for anyone's legend, at least until they get a little bit of help. We do see, you know, in terms of pathing, right? Xiao Hao is coming down bottom lane, but Beishang taking a lot of the same pathing does get to the Scuttle Crab first. Yeah, and Beishang is in a fantastic position, right? Uh, all three lanes currently have Pryo. Bibu is trading a lot of his health. You know, we talk about typically the cannon has the advantage in this matchup. Bubu is opting to like sacrifice his health bar to try and get the push. And there's two sides to that. Okay, one side is he's not able to crash the wave. It is now in a bit of an uncomfortable spot, but he should be able to recall, maybe TP back in, pick up some items. Ooh, uh, bottom fight. lane. Think got a lot of spears in Chocho. Will not be able to get the damage from the rend off to kill him. But heavy trading in terms of Team WE. Yeah, I mean, a good engage coming out from Kadaya, applying that pressure, using the power in this 2v2. And here's the thing, is all Beijing has to do is just threaten, just move over here, and Betty, I mean, he doesn't have the information, but that's the thing, the lack of information is so scary. Betty's if he walks up this way, he's dead if he walks up this tower. He is literally, we've seen so many ingenious poppy plays, the quick flash into the wall, and it's it's been honestly very, very nice to see that the innovative gameplay, I feel like, coming through. Uh, not going to be so this time around. Betty does step up, but it's as the back finishes for Beishong. But you can see Beishong actually putting a decent amount of, of focus down towards this bottom side of the map, making sure to caretake Shing and Kadai a little bit. 
which I think is good. If you're picking the Callista, especially when you're up against the Felios, there will come a point where he's just outscaled. Betty and Chocho are someone who really want to thrive in the 2v2, so putting that pressure down, helping them out really goes a long way. And yeah, I mean, he, they're not able to go for the dive because Chocho comes back, but Poppy dives in the side lane, so threatening. There's not really anywhere you can stand safely to avoid getting slammed into the wall. Uh, and as soon as that happens, you know, I think at level one, it's like a 1.6 second stun or something along those lines. It's really painful uh, and pretty much a guaranteed death if you're caught out. So we do see uh, the pressure come out. It allows, uh, it does deny some farm from Betty, but nothing too significant yet. Uh, and we get a, a move up from Kadaya just to help crush that wave in. I like that though. That's showing a little bit of, of at least communication and movement for WE, which I think is something we, we would love to see, at least for Kadaya's sake and for Beishong's sake. Uh, but we do see Chocho and Betty just getting reset into the lane. We have Xiao Hao actually back hovering down towards his bottom lane. Did get spotted out by that ward though. Yeah, so I don't think it's the, the biggest deal. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, AL have a choice. They can either let this wave crush into them, look for a gank, or they can try and crush pressure out. But the problem is, because the information's there, Beijing is ready to make something happen here. And yeah, I think Xiao Hao maybe, sen maybe senses something. Uh, and because Beisheng's here, they should just be able to push this wave up, maybe sweep out some vision, maybe challenge Xiao Hao. But Beisheng, he did spend a decent amount of time uh, with that bot, line, bot side lean, so just going to pick up the scuttle and hit level 5, but was down in XP compared to Xiao Hao. Yeah, he's uh, gotten this scuttle at least twice in a row. We'll see how big objective focus comes into play in this game in specific, right? We've had the dragon up for a little bit longer. We have them all in a top lane, though. Bu Bu getting the slicing maelstrom out of ZDZ and having those needlework stacks go straight into his health bar. Yeah, and ultimately, this favors ZDZ, right? Because Bu Bu burned the exhaust as well to make that happen. So if an all-in happens in the future, Bu Bu doesn't have that exhaust. ZDZ obviously still has a splash, could find the opportunity to apply some more pressure. Oh. Now, Beishan, did just start off the dragon? was called out and it had not feeling respond. confident there oh forge he ain't shariba shuffling today beishong down bottom lane the flash coming in chocho getting so low in first blood the team we shing still taking some damage still trying to put some damage onto betty but that's a nice little pickup yeah and i just love the play coming out from kadaya so going and mounting up and then obviously you charge at the nautilus what can the nautilus do can try and queue away but if you flip him already then obviously there's no real response he can only queue into you which is doesn't, not going to gain any distance so we're going to replay that one uh yeah could i pick this opportunity and here's the flash and now what can chocho do he can't queue the tower to get away doesn't have the flash available it's just a guaranteed death because could i use that summoner so really well played uh, and i'm really positive to see a decent start for we so far that's actually huge because then it, it evens up and, and loosens up Beishang's tight focus early on, right? He can play and bounce between mid and bot lane while Bu Bu is handling the matchup with ZDZ in the top. And we did see DBB start up the dragon. They have a lot of pings going around the dragon right now. We'll see if they can get a, a, an extra advantage in terms of that with the bot lane lead they've gotten. And you have Kadaya out on the roam as well. Yeah, now at this point, I feel like WE maybe have the pressure to look towards this dragon. Obviously, started it before, got it shut down. But it uh, looks like they're actually going a little bit more aggressive to really challenge the enemy jungle off There's AL nothing he can here. do about it, too. I mean, you have yeah. the Shao top lane uh, vision out here for Team WE as well. And Chocho around this area, but blue buff is easily, easily Beishang. Yeah, so be able to scare that one. Uh, I would have thought that Shaha would just start up the Herald in response to their bot side pressure. Bibu is over, just being annoying, trying to show up, but the problem is not really going to achieve anything. Uh, it just solo as a top laner into three. But you can look at what's happened on the bot side of the map. So Dragon actually hasn't been done. W instead opting to completely deny waves away from Betty right now. He is not getting a touch this wave in front of the tower, and I feel like a bunch of plates are going to be the forfeit as well. And now so Beishun with level six and Shing with level six. Bear in mind, if Kadaya tanks tower aggro, they can reset it with a Callista ult. So yeah. yeah, no way you're getting here. A lot of pressure in bottom lane. Team WE finding a win condition to play through, but it will be that Rift Herald picked up from AL and Xiao Hao beelining it down to this bottom lane. Keeper's verdict goes through onto Chocho, but Betty is still here to defend. That's a big old wave, but he'll step up to try to clear it. Yeah, I think you can see Betty posturing there. He's acting like he has all the backup in the world, when in reality, Xiao Hao wasn't actually there yet. But WE respect it. They don't want to overstep. 
uh, and they managed still to deny a ton of CS away from the Felios to get some plates. But now, here's the thing: is they're starting this dragon quite late. Yes, they have the Clister Ren. Oh, Forge! A bit more of an advantage. Oh, Forge! He walked straight into no vision, but the blast code gameplay, baby. They don't get a kill. Forge managed to get away, which is fantastic for AL, but the damage is still done. WE, they do the play on the tower first. They then start doing the dragon. Obviously, Xiaohao is going to be there to contest, but because they go for that pick, because they chunk Forge out, they then know they have the numbers advantage. They then know they can pick up the dragon. And all in all, WE get a thousand gold lead. They get the dragon as well, uh, and they're in a really good position. And Xiaohao is just trying to stop the burning at this point, going back down towards bottom lane. Has the Rift Herald available, so if they want to try to pull the trigger on that, they can get Betty and Shoto some more resources. But it's more so to try and temper the aggression of Shing and Kadaya. Let's see if they can find an opportunity. Remember, Kadaya has no flash, but obviously can crash down to get some distance. But I feel like AL are fishing for a window. The wave is pushing out, so either Shing and Kadaya just need to leave it as is and go for a reset. Or, yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to be the plan here. Uh, I feel like Betty's probably just going to push this one in regardless uh, and maybe look for look for some plates himself. We'll see what happens there. But regardless, Shang's going to get this blue buff on the top side and still waiting to see what, where the Herald comes down. That's the big thing for Xiaohao is ideally what he wants and what he would love to have in that bot side play is if you get a kill, if you get a numbers advantage, if you take someone off the map, you can then throw the Herald down and hopefully get like a full tower and get the maximum value. Ideally, if you get a bot lane and get Betty back in this matchup, that'd be great, but you take what you can get. Yeah, at this point, I think it'll be fine uh, either way, just at least getting some resources somewhat. But that's something else I want to talk about a little bit more is we were we put a pretty heavy spotlight on uh, on jungle percentage and, and where these junglers like to focus. But for me, it's been, you know, Shao Hao a lot of times baiting and, and waiting and, and not really able to, to find the extension where Beishong has been the one leading the charge, it feels like, so far in this game. Yeah, and he's been really active around the bot lane. And I mean, you look mid, Shanks has a pretty sizable farm lead. 30 CS over Forge. And there hasn't been really too much interaction there. It's just been naturally allowing your mid laner to pull ahead. You play towards the bot lane. Yes, top is like 15 CS down, but who's really that bothered uh, when you are playing Gwen and Cannon about that, that little bit of a discrepancy? So things are all really going positive for WE. Now, it feels like a repeat. Once more, we're seeing Beishong on the bot side of the map potentially fishing for some opportunities that is a low health tower and you can see betty's going for a reset so it may end up just being forfeit yeah what we were talking about it right we putting a lot of focus towards shanks in the mid lane but oh double emperor's right that's a lot of soldiers and shanks gets out of there with a shuffle forge not having the sharima shuffle because he is no emperor of sharima we do have the rift herald in top lane that was a funny little play in mid but now al try to capitalize a little bit on some momentum gameplay here a good window from al they unfortunately don't get the full tower but because of some work done by zz earlier you're still making a significant amount of progress and it. honestly yeah with no help here i don't think pb can do much is going to use the needlework. Does defend it bot lane, though. Keeper's verdict is coming through. It goes on to Betty. Toto is all alone, but here comes Forge as well. Beishong needs to get out of there. Goes over the wall, just trying to take the 1v1 before Toto can join. And that'll be Everfrost used by Forge. The rest of Team WE backing Beishong up. PUB does a good job of clearing the wave top. And the bot side, AL do a good job of defending. So we still get a stall out on this first tower. Obviously, both teams racing to get that extra amount of gold. But now they're going to be able to do so yet. Not just yet. DBZ still trying to work on the top side a little bit more here. But uh, just kind of pop it in. Auto attacks every which way he can to try to get that one. We also see Xiao Hao did back. But he's running back towards this mid lane to try to keep up aggression on the shanks. Which Forge missing the abduct on the combo. Yeah, we didn't even get much time to talk about the play that we saw with Forge. Uh, knocking Shanks under his tower, the double shot, uh, the double divide. Uh, very close to taking down Shanks. And they try and repeat gank when the flash is unavailable, but just not quite able to connect. And now, I mean, I feel like a strong wind would take down that tower at this point. Uh, ZDZ is probably just a wave or two away from taking it. So if WE want to get the first tower for their cluster, especially with plates fading, they need to make something happen immediately. And even then, I think they probably just missed their window. Yeah, I, I still, I can't get that visual out of my head and the only way it works is because of the delay on the uh the emperor's divide there we do get the uh tower in response here we got top side taken but then uh team we are able to clear up on him 
Yeah, so close. Uh, but unfortunately, I believe it was ZDZ who got the first tower, so it gets the extra bonus. Um, yeah, the extra so, goal. GG easy. Yeah, so the Kenner now pretty fed. Bear in mind, also has first strike for the extra gold. So currently sitting on two full items. Morel and Omicron completed. And if anyone you wondering, obviously the healing reduction is pretty nice here into Gwen Clister, but they did buff this item uh, not too long ago. Has 90 AP, 300 health now, so a really strong spike. Um, and we see WE setting up, I thought, for that dragon. No, they aren't because, you know, AL just said, let's go ahead and have party. Let's bring five people down here. And, you know, we said the team fight potential from AL is very scary. So we will get the split focus, the offset side plays, we get the dragon. Brandy was bludgeoned, but Rift Herald will be secured by Team WE. So trades back and forth here so far in the game. I mean, I'm going to be real. Uh, I see that cannon, and if the cannon is within, like, you know, three miles of me, I ain't interested in team fighting is all I'm going to say, <laughs> right? This cannon is hyper snowballed at this point in the game, uh, and 5v5 is not really going to be favorable. WE already had the first dragon, so losing the second, not a big of a deal. Uh, it's it unfair, be a though. Yeah, dragon. it's unfair. The Hextech dragon for the Kennet, like ZDZ just has the, the extra movement for the flanks. But it's not just that, dude. It's the fact, yeah, I mean, that that is it. The, the fact that you have the flanks, but also if you get the soul, the, the slow can be devastating. Yeah. Uh, Don't matter how many exhausts like you got. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, obviously, they kind of high rolled, getting the Hextech map. Uh, can't complain about that one. Uh, but now a dragon apiece, and it's WE. They still have that goldie. They now have the Herald in hand. I would expect them to look towards mid lane to try and crack that tier one. Uh, that is normally what pe people look to do with the, the second Herald, just so they can expand their vision control a bit deeper and push down into the map. I've been really impressed with Team WE's vision game so far. It, it feels like they do have a lot of control in terms of knowing where AL are moving through and trying to set up plays so far, even if you know we haven't had the craziest of bloody games 16 and a half minutes in. We're seeing that movement back and forth from Team WE. And again, on the mini map, you're seeing a lot of that vision, right? They're able to play around some of the little things that AL are doing. Yeah, and I think it's it's something that we have seen from WE is I feel like honestly this stage we've had some solid performances even though you know they haven't won a ton of games so they obviously haven't won any series this is the point where they they sort of shine they show that potential uh before things potentially come crashing down and that's what I'm hoping doesn't happen for them here you know they do still have that lead they are still working on it but they have to be super cautious about how they approach the team fights and now we're past the 40 minute point ZDC can always just find a TP angle behind you if a cannon turns up on your back line, uh, that's it. You know, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> nothing else to say on the subject. Indeed. Uh, I think the, those flags are going to be so crucial. The, the way that, I, I guess for me, what I'm looking out for is like, how do AL force Team WE into a Team 5 potential, into something that is favorable, favorable for anyone's legend? We do have a TP coming in mid lane to try to save the outer tower. Keep it verdict was channeled, but we get a little bit of uh, cooldown reduction on that one for Bei Shung. And it's just buying time at this point. Both teams feeling pretty okay with taking skirmishes here or there, but not giving over too much in terms of actual leads. This is one of the cool things about Poppy. Poppy was changed, got an MSI, but only really now has really started to thrive. If you don't cast the ultimate, it used to be going to a 30 second cooldown. It's now 15 seconds. If you're hanging around a Dragon or Baron and you channel your ult and someone like dashes away or something, you can just let it drop. Yeah. 15 seconds, it will 100% be up again. Uh, usually before the fight is finished and a great tool this game as well if like you manage to hit an ult onto Kennen, onto uh wukong or silas can have devastating effect which is why you know you talked before about what al need to do to set the fights i feel like getting early vision on an objective could make all the difference because if we are set up there if they've swept effectively if there are no flank wards that's what becomes really hard for al you want WE to be walking into areas where they don't have full information. And you also just don't have the strength right now for AL in terms of, you know, Betty is, is just on the one item, just on the Gale Force. And yes, we've seen a spike in aggression in the LPL of Feliosis when they get the Gale Force. I don't think Betty is in a position here to really play that aggressive, right? Because if you get caught out, if you do give over a lead, we're at a, a precipice in the game where those leads start to matter more since we haven't gotten a big differential in this game so far. Yeah, and WE gonna throw down the Herald and take that mid tier one as expected. Or oh, wants it, looking. man. He had the Emperor's Divide stolen, but that's a re-engage with the Magnet Storm from Kadai. He's almost dead. Faith's call brings him out, but re-engage from Forge. He is aggressive, and that's ZDZ with the Slicing Maelstrom to back it all up. AL, get onto the board in game one. 
yeah so a really nice play from forge there to catch out shanks ultimately uh and he's Forced able to it. take him down with the second re-engage kadaya playing with fire but obviously the first allows him to be safe so we see initially forge catches him with the everfrost allows uh him to connect with the stone afterwards and then kadaya goes what would typically be too deep but you have the clister backup but then the fact that we see forge again land the stun into that dredge line allows the kill now zdz burns a lot there and we have to sort of re-examine where the game is because we're eight seconds till dragon and bear in mind zdz doesn't have ult doesn't have flash we don't have wukong ult we don't have nautilus ult and ultimately if i'm looking at a team who needs the ultimate it is a l and even then we still have like poppy they still have gwen they've nearly got azir so i feel like the favor in terms of the ultimates they have and also less reliant on them and al will give up the dragon I'll look to contest some of this topside jungle but you know you have to ask like did that fight really favor them even though they got the extra kill I like that Beishang went straight to that blue buff, took it away from Forge, then goes to the Dragon to get that objective focus for Team WE. And at that point, AL are okay with, with giving that one over. I think obviously when the more important fights come along, when you get those item spikes that we're kind of waiting for, for AL, that's when they'll feel more likely to take some aggressive stances in those kinds of situations. But again, you're still just trying to uh, bend and not break at this point for AL and get to those team fights that actually matter that you can force the hand of Team WE. So I do want to mention though is the value of the individual Hextech -tech Dragons because you know they give ability haste, six ability haste, six percent attack speed. Some champions will like one of the stats, you know, and some champions will love both. And I look at WE's composition, BUB will love both, right? Shanks will love both. Both of these champions are champions True. who love both of those stats so much and then even then Jing isn't gonna exactly complain right the attack speed obviously more valuable than the ability haste for a clister but i just feel like if they start to stack up you know two three off those dragons it ends up being quite a lot of value in terms of stats quite a lot of power added on to these these champions that already scale pretty well in terms of the solo laners of we mm, it's the uh, those scaling aspects that I'm, I'm really really keeping a keen eye out for it since you know we are 22 minutes in and we've only had two kills. This is this is the, not bloody as I was expecting it gonna it was gonna be as we saw last split. It was where both these two teams were just going head to head constantly. It was it was a lot of that aggression uh, between these two teams. But this time we get a little bit of that here with the TP behind and AL trying to set something up. But keeper's verdict is right there and ZDC <laughs> peace. Yep, that's that's the kind of play. That's what Poppy can do to Kennen. Uh, and if you don't have flash to flash away from a flash over it, it's very hard to dodge the ultimate. It's such a fast, uh, so it comes out so quickly. Um, but technically it's a projectile, but it doesn't really feel like one. But yeah, so TP burn from, from ZZ to literally zero effect, uh, being honest. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to come back and fight another day. <laughs> I guess is my, my words of wisdom in that aspect. Uh, we did get the Banshee's Veil actually completed from Bubu, who will be coming onto the map now, but we're getting a nice little defensive stance from AL as they want to try and push some vision up here. We did get another tower falling, so that'll be a nice little pickup, and we've gotten three now for Team WE, so continuing to burgeon with this 1,000 gold lead that they've been hovering around for the last round. Yeah, and I think, undoubtedly, I don't expect too much action until we get to that next Dragon Point. We'll have summoners coming back up again. A lot of the summoners you see that are unavailable, you know, like ZDZ's flash, Shanks and Shing's flashes, they were burnt uh, prior to the last dragon. So all those tools will be there and it will really just come down to execution once again. But we have about two minutes until that dragon. Obviously, a big point is that you have to also bear the Baron in mind because uh, you don't want a team sneaking that. Especially WE have fantastic Baron DPS if they get their hands in it. So AL do a little bit of housekeeping there and put some, some vision down, clear some out. The focal point is going to be towards that dragon i would expect from both teams as the objective starts to approach and we see some decent items coming through you know you talked about about we spikes but zdz has a void staff morel and that rocket Ooh. belt you have the lord dominix from betty giving that extra shred i should be able to help deal a bit better with the front line of we and honestly my my special shout out is the uh the zanyas for forge when we've seen him just going in with the abscons of ducks He's able to get that Zanyas in there afterwards, so that's also going to be pretty huge. And again, we're just waiting for the setup at this point. The three-item spike queued for ZDZ 
hasn't really been able to get one of those like incredible mega flanks off yet and you're waiting for that combo with Betty to get the team fight really online once he's on three items there but as you were kind of spotting out right it's good to see some of those things coming online especially now that we have another one of those singular hex tech dragons coming on the rift in about 45 seconds the key for me is the vision gain that you were talking about earlier and al do have a little bit of vision down there right now but the setup is definitely in favor of team we early on for this one yeah, and we see W already there. They've used the side lanes. Bear in mind, ZDZ didn't have TP, so we had to come bot. And they've had to send Forge top lane to push out there. So those waves will end up in the long term favoring AL. But the homework was done by WE, so they have control of the objective. Both supports reset, and you can see in the inventories, full set of wards available. And WE are trying to, you know, deny this blue buff, expand their control. Whereas AL, their goal is, you know, if we take mid prio, that might be our route in. Forge is walking down this way. Not going to pull the trigger on the TP here. ZDZ working on a flank on the side, but Team WE are front and center on the Dragon Pit here. And AL, they go for the engage with Chocho leading the charge here. They are able to catch one out. Bayshon goes down. ZDZ gets the triple slicing Maelstrom on the back line. And this is a front to back fight that AL will take every day of the week, Ox. There's no hope. For WE, we set it up all day long, and AL forced the hand of the World Elite. Absolute decimation. Not only do they get the dragon, but they have enough of a numbers advantage. They can head straight over to the Baron as well. WE get crushed there, and despite you know things looking good for them, they have positioning on the objective, but they don't respect the cannon. And Chocho decides, I'm going to engage because ZDZ is there to threaten. And then the ultimate from the Nautilus combined with the cannon ultimate. Yes, the exhaust comes oh. in. It doesn't do that much damage, but it stuns them. It locks them up, and it gives time for AL to kill the front line of WE, and then instantly Xiao Hao jumps on the back line. How did... I don't even think the back line of WE got to do anything in that fight. How were they in range? Oh my god, Bei Shung! He steals it! The TP's come down! The cavalry is in here! Keeper's verdict was stolen by Forge, but the Baron Scuttle, stolen by Team WE! Oh my lord. I mean, we didn't get to see the lead up for that because of the replay. But uh, yeah, it looks like AL weren't doing Baron as fast as they thought. And just when AL find a big advantage, it ends up completely backfiring. Beishung finds his way in. And we're going to get a replay and see what happened there. Hopefully nothing too crazy happens here. He just so. walks in. He just it's walks so in. low. The die is yeah. already in there. The stun, maybe. And I, I think I think the problem is, is because Chocho is so low, he opts to leave the pit. He doesn't want to die for nothing. And he is probably the person who would be best suited to interrupt Beishong yeah. from getting there. So, yeah, a bit of an unfortunate one. I think the focus there was like Chocho tank, so Xiao Hao is healthy. But in reality, they needed uh, Chocho healthy to zone away the poppy. She was one of the first to die, therefore one of the first to be up. And ultimately, WE pull out of nowhere. Nice smite from Beishong. And now Baron in hand. Gold is even. Dragons are even. Oh you know, after God. losing that fight. Situation's not too bad. I was literally just about to go on this rant about like, you know, WE holding on to a 1,000 gold lead for the, the entirety of the game, it felt like. And then now all of a sudden, AL are just like, nope, that's mine. And they get a 2,000 gold lead off the back. Some crazy plays. But now Shanks gets a crazy play onto ZDZ. But that slicing Maelstrom's going to be huge on the back. ZDZ taken down, though, as it is a trade one for one so far. Shao Hao and Forge to separate the fight here. Chocho is coming down. But I didn't even get to make that point because, as we said, Team WE came out clutch. Beishong with the clutches of smites, and now they have the advantage. Oh, and Poppy fishing for a knockback. Don't think I'll connect here. No cannon means it's harder for AL to fight, but the Azir going down, burning flash and trading, not exactly ideal. And they are so scared of Forge with that Magnet Storm from the RAL. Obviously, very impactful for the uh, Silas. And also, I don't know if you know this, there's 110% AP ratio on that over the duration so quite a high value ultimate for silas to steal obviously gonna do a lot more damage than the rel would and we had a replay of how that one panned out and i can understand the thought process here like if you shuffle the cannon you know he has no flash if you get that kill that might be enough to push but the problem is you end up with the cannon on top of you there because beishung uh, not very yeah. kindly knocks the cannon into you and that one for one trade actually favors al there because now you know we have 25 seconds left on the baron not really much came for it for the side of we 
and it looks like we'll just kind of get the game resetting and going back to a focal point being those dragons yeah and the biggest thing is if al had gotten this i mean that that could have literally just been the game right they would have been looking at inhibs they would have been looking at lasting damage at least so huge pick up for we to keep consistent on the map right and we saw a little taste of what we had set up for anyone's legend right they get into one of these front to back team fights they get set up with the zdz flanks it is so hard to navigate for team we so they need to you know buy their time find another way in yeah they need eyes on cannon ultimately and something i really love from zdz is he's very good at going on a flank popping the sweeper having a control board doing everything he can to make sure the position he's in is hard to contest you know ideally just if you have a ward of the cannon then you can do things like you can preemptively the divi emperor's divide with the azir before he even gets to touch and you saw in that last fight just wasn't quite able to make it work but the fact of it now is well as we said dead even and it's 45 seconds until that dragon we're seeing teams start to lean over and contest the vision we saw last time the fight went heavily in favor of al and now so we have to work out how to make that be uh different this time around bear in mind shanks has no flash this azir may have a banshees but he doesn't have that extra bit of mobility to try and keep himself away from the cannon. He got that damage though. A couple of those pokes and prods bringing the bell like half hell. That three and a half island spike will be huge. And Team WE again, they find themselves front and center in the pit. Not gonna try to find some PTSD today for them because they need to find a better way to take the fight. And it looks like it's an engage from Kadaya to do it. Moonlight Vigil comes out for Betty. Look, Sing on the side. He's going for the back line here. This could be a big moment for Team WE, but AL are able to pick apart. ZDZ flashing over the wall with the slicing Maelstrom. It's going to be a close fight. Forge goes down and Ooh. Team WE, Shing was surviving that entire time and it helps take the fight for WE. Man, Shing's so aggressive there, just going up into the face of Betty and soloing him out. Now, Shing has picked up some honey fruit. He's healthy. Bu Bu has teleport. They're looking to try and secure this dragon and using those two members alive to do so. ZDZ knows. I mean, not only do you have no ultimate, oh no, he might be in trouble. He just got baited out. I mean, he stepped up. He knew they were there. He tries to get through. Bu Bu not finding the damage just yet. And ZDZ tries trying to walk to the safety of his tower. Now he's going back in. And Bu Bu, oh. he's dead. Oh, Shing was there just to watch it all happen. Massive miscalculation from Bu Bu there. Ends up thinking he can solo out the cannon, but bear in mind, this is a four item cannon, ult or not. If you get out of him face in his face, you will find the kill. And now we're gonna get a replay going on. This ends up very messy here. We see this big clump in the Shing. middle, but ZDZ is so late to the fight. And watch Shing, he just goes straight up to Betty and is in his face. And Betty cannot kill him. Bear in mind, this is a shield bow cluster. This is a cluster who had the makings of her randwins. I'm not sure if she'd finished it there and then, but you know, a very tanky target hard oh, wow. for the Ephelios to take down. I mean, look at the damage dealt. But ultimately, you know, despite the fact that WE won the fight, they lose the objective because of the mistake from Bu Bu. Yeah, and that'll be sole point for anyone's legend. Again, we were talking about the significance to this Hextech soul, but also the individual dragons. And that's going to be a nice little pickup for anyone's legend to rest their laurels on here. But again, got a shout out to uh, to Shing with the the you know, balls to the wall play there. The flash to start it off, you definitely want to have that flash there for the Callista. But I like the aggressiveness. I like the fact that like this is my moment to shine. I'm going to go in and get this back line of it. But it's it's a five and one Callista now, right? You're you're on four and a half items. It's it's really going to be about navigation of these fights and we got to see more of things like we saw last time with Daya getting the lead off with the right separation because again the front to back not looking too good yeah I, th I think it's just about maintaining that distance and now take a look at it like Shing is full build two item lead on Betty but this That's is about as good as it crazy. gets this is as good as this gets because you snowball that cluster you got the cluster ahead and you saw what the cluster could do but the longer the game goes on the more ground Betty is going to catch up right the more opportunity there is for Betty to start being able to challenge the Callista. If Shing does that same play that he did in that previous fight in five, 10 minutes, then he might just shred through him, especially if he has the right gun. So definitely a cautious one. Now, Ayala posturing around this Baron and WE are tentatively, tentatively trying to check the area. DDZ has to be careful, he doesn't get spotted out here, but should just be able to zip away. But both teams trying to look for any opportunity, any angle in to try and find uh, some pressure on this objective again the warning just been really good for we right they've been spotting out zdz who i guess even with the ward 
Might not matter. Uh, Kadaya goes in for the hex flash. Kadaya just goes down. Betty uh, will take that kill all day long. That's Baron. Where's the Clista ult? Where's the Clista ult? That's my question. J Shing had it available, but now you're man down. ZDZ's looking oh, for the they're going the back in. Starting. ZDZ's way away from the fight, though. It's going to take him a while. That needlework's doing some work here. Biu Biu is separating them, but here comes ZDZ. He's got the angle here. Can he get in there? He doesn't want to pull the trigger too early. He knows the health bars for anyone's legend are just not there to back him up. Beishong, he traces down Forge. He gets the kill, too. Is he going to give it over to Biu Biu? Forge or surviving with the Kingslayer, but eventually going down to Shank. And ultimately, just, just very messy from AL there, walking straight up to this super strong Gwen. I mean, not even super strong in terms of items, but just the fact that we're at level 18, Gwen is a critical mass. And CDZ, I feel like it's kind of getting baited by the, uh, by the hex gates keeps using them and then ends up so far away because you know not only do they take a bit of time where he ends up on the other oh side oh my god he's going distance. back he's literally oh, he's he was going in, yeah he was pinging the hex gates but he doesn't make it there tp's back top kadai goes for an engage but betty that's that damage you're looking for big inferno moonlight vigil cdc on the back he can't get it though that's a nice deflection for Beishong and the rest of team we they're going in on the back line Big slicing maelstrom, but the only one left is Xiao Hao, and not for long. Xiao Hao is a little bit tanky, does get over the wall with the flash. Beishong will try and chase him down, but that's huge for Team WE. And that should be barren for them. ZDZ once again, so late to the fight. Betty already down, or unable to do anything when he's getting aggressed on, and it feels like the scaling aspects of that is here, of that uh, Gwen. The fact that we have a full build cluster is just too much and you can see here you know this play is coming out uh ult comes back in from betty then beautiful job from beishan here just doesn't let the cannon go in and betty so disrespectful walks up and then actually gets caught by the clister ult because you know there's an angle there's a, a, a sort of thread the needle shot to connect onto the aphelios instead of the nautilus and kadaya finds it and with that the fight is just won i feel like al are just getting too hasty not being patient not finding the windows and now WE with the Baron in hand with a 3k gold lead are looking to secure that third dragon of the game. Yeah, that's the second Baron for them as well as uh, as we're able to see, you know, a lot of, of big play coming out from Team WE in the crucial moments, but also the fumbling that anyone's legend is presenting us with. And as we've seen time and time again, these last couple dragons, it's all about the setup early on. Team WE are in place, but AL trying to set up with a push in mid of their own. But again, that's the, the Baron buff still ticking, still two minutes on that thing. It's gonna be hard to push. Yeah, I, I think you have to give up the dragon. I think you just have to play defense. There's definitely not a wave clear because Betty has that uh, Infernum to help out. But a lot of uh, a lot of difficulty out of the back that play. And also, I want to note, we've seen Forge pick up the Rabadon. ZDZ's worked on his. That wasn't an ideal place to take a fight just because, you know, you want to be able to hit those big item spikes. Once the Rabadon yeah. is available with all the high AP scalings of the Silas, all the AP scalings of the cannon, that's when you should feel more comfortable. But it is still, it's coming down to execution. As much as AL found the angle in those earlier fights, it feels like they are really struggling to connect. And now, to be finally going to get some more power is taking down the first True. baron didn't really achieve a ton the second one is starting to make some headway yeah it's uh, it's gonna be some some good damage down to the bottom side but i will say as we see betty clearing that's what i want to talk about here is we've seen shing at full build for the longest time it feels like at this point you're 38 minutes in but we still have a long way to go for betty and we've all seen lpl felios just destroy late game team fights and really a lot resting on you know zdz with the crucial flanks if he gets the setup how does betty smack it down with a big moonlight vigil or with just the damage right because you're still waiting on two items right like you're working on your fourth but you still have a whole another item completion waiting to go for this late game carry you need the survivability i think at this point betty does do quite a bit of damage but you do no damage when you're dead i think he goes without yeah. saying He's going for the Hex Drinker. He will, obviously would love to have a more, would love to have the Blood this that he's working on as well. But just, he's down in gold. He needs time. You see a bit of aggression from Team WE try to get this tier 2 tower. They do do so. They have 20 seconds left on the Baron buff here. And just get as much damage onto the towers. They've got all the outer towers, at least at this point. All that's left are the Inhib towers and the Nexus towers here for anyone's legend. But that's where the defense can come through. And that's where, you know, the team composition for anyone's legend 
is more easily playable. We've set it up from the beginning, right? They have an incredible team fight set up for themselves, and they just need to be clumped up, grouped up, and not be picked apart like we've seen WE be able to do against them, right? Beishang has been so crucial. The denial of ZDZ, even when he does get into position. Yeah, the poppy has worked so well into what AL has to offer. And if Beishang can keep doing that, I think AL is going to struggle to find a way, and they have three minutes to work out a solution before that Drake is up and available. I mean, you can look at the gold. So, yeah. Shing's been full build for, well, 20,000 gold in pocket, 3,000 in the inventory, and Betty is just wishing he could borrow some of that, but I don't think Shing's Does he it. change anything at this point? Like, for the Kalispa, I feel like no. you're pretty... You're no, sitting you, pretty, I mean... If your GA gets proc, then you sell it and buy something else. Uh, maybe, like, a Bloodthirster. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't sell your boots on Kalista, because obviously, you know, if you... Like, normally <laughs> on, a, on a typical AD carry, you sell your boots, but with Kalista, your boot tier influences how far you dash, so... Yeah. Champion's unplayable <laughs> if you sell those boots. And it does mean that Shing is obviously not getting any stronger at this point of the game. Like, and that has been the case for a while, which is why I was sort of concerned about AL playing catch up. But there is the thing to note is that Shanks has finished his items quite recently. Yeah. Bubu has still got one more. Interesting enough, Bubu not going for the Nash's Tooth, but obviously he's getting a ton of attack speed from the two Hextech Dragons. Well, not a ton, but like yeah. 12%. Uh, yeah. A nice little bonus. I will say, for me, it's so interesting to see the duality of these two carries, right? We, we transition away, obviously, Shang super big on the Azir, but I think more focus on Xing, uh, Xing at this point, because you're seeing, like, there's the full build, but with the Kalista, it's all about survivability. Even with the Elixir of Iron there, it's about how many stacks you can get in before you rip the spears out, and how you navigate the team fights. And with the tankiness there, he's putting a lot of focus on his mechanics and his survivability in the team fight. Being said that we now have the Bloodthirster for Betty, so quite a bit harder to try and take out this Aphelios. But you can see WE already posturing for this objective. They have the gold lead 6,000 now. Obviously, a lot of that is put onto Shing, who hasn't been able to spend that gold. So not as relevant as it might seem, but both teams posturing Terry. This dragon fight could well be game deciding, and WE are the ones in control. You can see Bu Bu. Not just the fact that Bu Bu's on the flank, but also that means ultimately if Bu Bu's there, then ZDZ isn't. Yeah, also the fact that silently but surely Shanks is also full build, right? So you have two full build damage carries for WE and they want to kind of press that advantage up where you're still waiting on some of those completions for anyone's legend. They do bend and not break for anyone's legend. They're just trying to push this back out and take down this tower that WE are using as a home base at this point. Yeah, and it makes it so... That's a big engage, though. But look, AL going back in here. Moonlight Vigil front to back. Chow Hao getting taken out, though. Kadaya now. Big Emperor's Divide from Forge himself. And now you got the Slicing Maelstrom. Chow Hao tries to come back in. Benny is full health. Benny's got the Inferno. Benny's, Benny's got the damage. And Benny is the late game carry for anyone's legend. Quadra kill for Betty. They lined them up. Shao Hao with the initial engage. The follow up from Forge. CDZ sets up the end. But it is Betty who knocks them down. A quadra kill. And you can see with the Infernum there, the perfect weapon for that scenario. Soul would be available with these death timers with the guns available to Betty. They're just going to look for the end That's here and now. Kedaya in 15. I think, Mizal, that is just it. He's got red, white to finish off the game and to end WE's hopeful chances. They had such a big lead. All it takes is one game. All it takes is Betty and anyone's legend. Game one going over. What a comeback, honestly. And I, I feel Woo! like this is why I love AL. This is why I'm so in love with this team because it, it doesn't matter what the gold says. Like it's it's irrelevant. They can't see the golden game, right? So they just don't think about it. They will always, always look for the team fight angle. And this split, we've seen them more often than not be able to find it. 6K gold deficit, right? You're against Nazir, a Gwen, these late game carries. The fact that the cluster has so much more gold I'm and you already so carry and they find the engage and it, it wasn't an easy engage it wasn't just like everyone presses r at the same time right it was the fact that shao Hao went in disengaged then forge found the angle then finally zdz the clump into the infernum and then they were dealing with a difficult situation i mean i feel like ultimately if we had backed off and just played towards the dragon that might not have happened but al pull it out of the bag and oh what a great one, team fight I, one fight so well played one literally one fight 
threw the throat into the game win. Like, I am so hyped right now. I, it was game one of a best of three. We still have so much ahead of me, but it was literally so much in the palm of the hand of Team WE, and they take the wrong fight at the wrong time. I was talking about items. You had two full damage carries. Betty was still a, a half item away from full build, but it's the right timing. The Inferno comes out. The grouping... I, I thought, yo, Team W were able to take that fight in the first half. You, oh my God. Yeah. You, you yeah, almost yeah. don't see it because the game ended so quickly. But right there at the end, there's a big drop. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm going to say it, right? I don't know how much damage Betty did in that final team fight. But I feel like a lot of mileage was gained by <laughs> Betty catching up to where Shanks is. And like, it's so hard to criticize WE because ultimately... They played the game well, you know, the early game was solid. They got a big substantial lead and then they, they flubbed one fight, you know, and I'm sure they'll look back over that, that fight and say, look, we could have done this better. We should have done this. Or they'll say, look, we made the wrong decision. We should have backed off and played for the dragon area where they had no vision. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's so frustrating to be doing so well in a game. And then one fight is all that is needed, but that is yeah. the AL special. The one fight wonders, like it's all they need to come back into a game and find the advantage. It does not matter what the goal deficit is they just simply don't care and you can see shanks 43 percent of the damage done by his team right even with Ching at full build for so long it, it was still shanks show pretty much but in the end it's the al show at 37 percent damage for betty not too shabby but it, a lot of that coming in that last moment and it's just crazy right we had you know, two kills at like 22 minutes into the game we get a lot of back and forths around the later objectives and then one fight 43 minutes in wins Yep, <laughs> that's all it takes. And it was close, LPL. honestly. It was close because you saw Betty getting low, but finally having completed that Bloodthirst, they was able to sustain up with the damage he was dealing. I think if one person messed up on AL, if one person didn't do their job, as much as Betty was the highlight, right? Don't get mm. me wrong. But if one person didn't do their job there, I don't think they win that team fight. It was, it was, yeah. it was close enough that it really came down to everyone doing their, doing their role. And that's why I love this team. I know I keep saying it, but like, they are so good as a five-man unit. It's bigger than the uh, bigger than the sum of their parts. It feels like the cohesion is so important. I'm, I'm so glad we have, you know, at least one more game to see at them least. today. I'm so excited. We'll see what WE can do to bounce back after that roundabout loss in game number one of the series. We'll be right back after a short break, though. So don't.